Yo, what's good? Welcome back to another episode of Levitation, the Sunday series. We coming back with a good one. We coming back with an amazing one. We coming back with a spectacular one. You know what I'm saying? I hope it bless you. Let's get into it. We all get dealt a bad hand in life. It's inevitable. It's not a matter of if it's going to happen. It's a matter of when it's going to happen. And what I love about the word of God is that God was strategic enough to display the complex nature of the people that he used to show us that we are just as complex as the people that he used. What that tells us is that we are no different than the people that he used. So even in our mess, we still can be developed and used. And out of all those stories displayed, there is one common theme that's very prevalent. It's a principle that we must apply to our lives. And that principle is waiting. Wait, wait, wait. Literally, wait before you go. Because it's a principle that we desperately need to practice in our lives. Before you turn it off, wait, there's more. There's one amazing story in particular in the Word of God that helps us to be able to see the principle and see how it actually is applied and how you can actually benefit from waiting on God. For the sake of time, I'm not going to read you the scripture. You can do that in your own time, but I'm going to give you the Spark News version. There was a father named Jacob. Jacob had a son named Joseph. The Bible says that Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph was given to him in older age. So right off the back, it set the scene that Joseph was shown favoritism. Joseph goes on to have a dream by God, and his dream symbolized that he was going to be over his brothers. If you look at that passage of scripture, it never says that God told Joseph to tell his brothers, but what does Joseph do? Joseph goes after having a dream, gather up all his brothers and say, hey, look, look what God told me last night, that I am going to be ruling over you. Now, what he said was true, but you have to question what was Joseph's motive in telling his brothers. This lets us know that Joseph wasn't being wise with his gift. Long story short, all this provoked his brothers to, first, they wanted to kill him, but then they changed their mind and decided to sell him into slavery. Sometimes because of our immaturity, even with the gift that God has given us, we can bring on extra problems in our lives. So now Joseph is a slave, and during his journey, we learn three ways on how to wait on God. The first way is service. Now, here's Joseph going from the favorite son to now being a slave to Potiphar. Joseph is a slave, but Joseph didn't complain about being a slave. He didn't halfway do the job that he was ordered to do, but Joseph approached his task with full effort, even though he wasn't supposed to be a slave. In Genesis chapter 39, verse 2, it says the Lord was with Joseph, so he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the home of the Egyptian master. I want you to get this. In order for God to give him favor in everything that he did, Joseph had to have the desire to do everything right to begin with. Majority of us have the completely opposite mindset. We are at jobs. We are in situations that we don't want to be in. We know we shouldn't be at this level. We know God has given us a vision of where we should be, but where we are right now does not represent it. And we start to despise that. And because we despise this place, our service and where we are reflects how we feel. So that means we're not putting our maximum effort at this current job that we're in. We're not putting our maximum effort at this position in the church. We're not putting our maximum effort in this relationship, in this friendship. We're not putting the maximum effort in taking care of the vehicle that we currently are in. We're not fully putting the maximum effort to take care of the apartment that we're in. But what we can learn from Joseph is that we have to serve properly where we are currently. And our service in where we are currently creates the space for God to pour his favor on our lives. When you walk, when you talk, when you serve, and when you believe that God is in your corner, then your focus moves from the situation to a desire to please God in everything that you do, including serving properly in your current situation. So because God's hand was over Joseph and he was succeeding in everything that he did, Potiphar noticed it and promoted him to being over his household. That sounds like a great come up story, but wait, that's more. In Genesis chapter 39, verse seven through nine, it says, and Potiphar's wife soon began to look at Joseph lustfully. Come and sleep with me, she demanded, but Joseph refused. Look, he told her, my master trusts me with everything in his entire household. No one here has more authority than I do. He has held back nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How could I do such a wicked thing? It will be a great sin against God. The second way you wait on God is obedient. Now Potiphar's wife checking him out and throwing him in the box. Oh Lord, can I say the box? She throwing it at him and he dodging. He 
He dodging. This is happening day after day. I'ma be real. Majority of us would have taken the opportunity just to spite our master. But look at Joseph's mindset. He said, A, I can't do that to my master. But B, I can't do that to God. Joseph still obeyed even when he got promoted. And some of us wonder why we not getting a promotion. Cause you ain't obeying now. So if you ain't obeying now, what make you think you gonna obey when God elevates you? God knows you ain't gonna obey when he elevates you. So why would he elevate you? But Joseph obeyed. And because Joseph obeyed, you would think that God is about to promote him even more, right? No. Joseph get accused of rape. Potiphar's wife accused Joseph of rape. Potiphar throws Joseph in jail. What happens when you waiting on God in obedience? And that obedience lands you in a worse position than before. A lot of us will give up. We'll take it as a sign that we need to stop waiting. I need to stop trusting. What's the point of obeying? From now on, I'll do things my way. But Joseph continued to wait on God. Genesis chapter 39, 21 through 23, it says, but the Lord was with Joseph in prison and showed him his faithful love. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. Before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that happened in the prison. The warden had no more worries because Joseph took care of everything. The Lord was with him and caused everything he did to succeed. Joseph applied the same first principle that I mentioned of service to his situation in jail. And because he applied that same principle in jail, the Bible says that he got even elevated elevated in prison to the point where he operating and running the prison. Why? Because Joseph applied the principle of service in no matter what situation he was in. And because he was serving not for the people but for God, he was operating in obedience. And because he was fully committed to his service and because he was committed to being obedient, God showed favor to Joseph and allowed everything that he tried to do to succeed. He was able to be elevated in every situation. From my perspective, I'll look at that and be like, yeah, you know, that's um, that's good and everything, you know, um, but there's a dilemma. Joseph is still far from the initial dream that he was given. But in spite of that, Joseph chooses to wait on God. So if we look at our current situations, we have to ask ourselves, are we applying those first two principles? Are we serving to the best of our abilities, no matter which circumstance we're in, no matter which job we're operating in, no matter where we currently are? Because first we gotta realize the fact that we're still breathing is a blessing within itself. To show your appreciation that you're able to even be in a circumstance, we have to serve properly within whatever circumstance there is. That does not mean that we should not want or have a desire to get out of it. That does not mean that we shouldn't continue to trust God for the vision for greater. But what it means is to serve properly where you currently place. And secondly, are we obeying God to the best of our ability? Your obedience to God when nobody's looking will show God that you're gonna be obedient when he promotes you. If you're gonna be obedient when he promotes you, why wouldn't he promote you? But you wait on God through service and obedience. But wait, there's more, and we're gonna get to that more in the next episode. I know it's too long. I don't want I don't wanna hold y'all too long. Some pastors and some ministers and some speakers are long-winded. Me, I try not to be that way. So I'm gonna break it up into two parts because I know y'all attention spans are short. I know you can thank me later, but on the next episode, we'll cover the last principle on how to wait on God. This is Levitation where we're reaching our highest potential. Stay blessed. See you next week, look. Come back next week. See you next week, I'm serious.